Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on mirroring ad balls. Uh, a few people on Petscord were saying that they would like a version of the devil horns that don't have a headband attached. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be using this opportunity to explain mirroring ad balls and I will also make a clothing item and put that up for download for everybody to use. Before we get started with the actual hexing, I just want to go through what the structure of a pet is and how ad balls work. So when you're mirroring ad balls, that's not something you can do in Pet Workshop, unfortunately. You do have to use Lines Pro. So we're going to open up the orange short hair breed file. I've already done that. I've loaded it up and have a look at what the Apple section looks like and what's going on there. So you go to lines and then OR is the adult. You can see OR kit is the kitten. This is more or less the same in any breed file. You'll have the abbreviation followed by the abbreviation kit or pup if it's a dog. And we can scroll down until we get to the Apple section. Okay. Dogs and cats have slightly different ad balls. In the case of most cats, they'll have nose ad balls and ear ad balls, but a few breeds, like for example, the, um, the Maine Coon, have a few additional ad balls. I think the Honey Bear also does for, for the chest fuzz. So just bear that in mind, it's not gonna be identical in all cases. And again, with dogs, it's not gonna be identical either. Okay. Now, how exactly do ad balls work? Well, ad balls are based off one of the baseballs and all pets have the same number of baseballs. They're different for dogs than they are for cats, but all of them have 67 baseballs. You count from zero, so it goes up to number 66. And if you're not sure about what they are, you can go to the pet editing manual and look under ball numbers and there's a really handy chart. One is for dogs and one is for cats. So as you can see, it goes up to number 66, but it starts from number zero. So there's 67 balls. All right. Why is that important? It's important because the ad ball section carries on from that. So you can actually see in the case of the orange short hair, the ad balls are somewhat labeled and you can see this very first one is labeled as number 67 and of course that makes sense because the baseballs go up to 66 and then the additional balls the add balls start from 67 so you can count down and you can see that we start from 67 then 68 69 70 and so on and again they're frequently labeled in some of the base files. And then you will sometimes have groups of them like this, where the first one is labeled. So you see 77, 78, and 79 are the nose apples. When you're gonna edit a file and you're gonna do some apples work, I highly recommend that you open up the vanilla file that you're gonna be working on and you have a look at the apple list and you go to the end of that list, such as here, and you make a note just by, well, this already has uh, a little colon there. If you do a semicolon like that, and then you say last ad ball or something like that. Ooh, I have caps lock on, let me fix that. Here we go. Then you're gonna know where all your additional ad balls that you're adding start. And that's really handy. So I'm gonna save this file as it is now gonna go back to Pet Workshop and I'm gonna just reload that particular file. Make sure that my apply changes is to the base data so I'm not adding things to the overrides. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is start adding some ad balls to my cat. Now you do have a few different options for how you do this. For a clothing item, you want all the ad balls to be based off the same baseball. So if you look here, for example, at the ears, you will see that first column. Sorry if you hear cat sounds in the background occasionally, those are my cats screaming. Um, so the first column is the baseball that the, each ad ball is based off of. So in the case of the ears, you see that the left ad balls are based off ball number eight. 
and then the right are based off ball number 10 and it carries on and then you also have the same thing for 9 and 11. And for the nose you see that all the ad balls are based off base ball number 37. And base ball number 37 in cats is actually omitted but if you go to show omitted balls you can see base ball number 37 is that dark one there. So these three pink balls that make up the nose are actually all based off that omitted ball. You need to think about which base ball you're going to be basing your ad balls off of. You can also base ad balls off of each other and that also becomes relevant for mirroring them. Let's begin by doing the, the simple thing and just basing some ad balls off of the head. So to add uh, an ad ball, you right click on the baseball that you want to use. You see that it says head at the top. You can also check if you look on the bottom left, you will see right now that I am scrolling, that I am uh, hovering over the head, that it says head down in this corner here. That's a handy way to check that you're definitely in the right place. And then you just click on add ad ball and that will do that. The ad ball will take on the characteristics of the baseball. So I'm gonna, start off by just decreasing the size. I'm going to remove the texture. I'll put something else on it just so I can see it better. I'm gonna change the color. I'll change it to a dark red color. And I also want to smooth it. I don't want any fussiness. So I will turn that to zero. Okay, this is quite big still. I'll decrease the size a little bit more, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is move this around. You can move your, your ad ball around using this option here and it tells you how to move it. So if you shift, you move the ball vertically, uh, control moves it left, right, and alt moves it back and forth. So I'm using control and then alt, and then I will go like this and you shift just play around with positioning it how you want it to be so that we can create some devil horns. Now, I can continue doing that. So I can add another ad ball, I can do the same process and I can continue to build the horn off of balls based off the head. However, that is a bit of a pain because obviously I have to repeat the process over and over again and it does make mirroring easier, but I'm gonna show you a little trick that means you don't actually need to go through all that. So I'm gonna build my ad ball structure just based off the existing ad ball. So I'm gonna add another ad ball based off that base ad ball. So I now have my little devil horn kind of ready there. I'll save and then reload in here. And if we scroll down to the ad ball section, you now see I have four new ad balls. I will label these. So it's my left devil horn. Okay. Now what do these numbers mean? Well, the ear ad ball started at number 80. And the last ear ad ball is number 91. You can count them to see that 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, right? So that means that this ad ball, this first ad ball here, is ad ball number 92. Again, this first column shows you the base ball. So our very first ad ball that we've created is based off the head ball, which is number 24. That's the base head ball. 
and you can check that you can go here and have a look through the, the cat list and if you go to number 24 you'll see that it says the head my next ball was based off of that ball and as we said that is ball add ball number 92 so this first number is now a 92 and then of course this add ball is now number 93 so my next add ball which is based off of that one has the first column as 93 and then that is 94 and then my next add ball is add ball number 95. So this is where it can get confusing. You have to remember that this first number is not the add ball number, it's the number of the ball the add ball is based off of. So my first add ball to recap was based off the head. My next add ball was based off of that add ball, which was add ball number 92. And then my next one was, was based off of no, number 93. And my next one was based off of number 94. So I actually have apples going up to number 95. Okay. If I want to mirror these as they are, what I need to do is copy this just as it is. I'm just going to copy the whole thing right below. Of course, this is now going to be my right devil horn. And these are no longer the numbers. I have to carry on counting down. So this is now num number 96, 97, 98, 99, because these are the actual numbers of my apples. I want my first apple to still be based off the head. I don't need to change that. But my next apple needs to be based off of this one. So I look here and that's apple number 96. So this apple is now based off 96. This one will be based off of 97. This one will be based off number 98. Eight. There we go. So this now will have created another horn. However, it's not yet mirrored. And the reason it's not mirrored is because we still have them in the exact same position. So to mirror them, we have to change our X coordinate. Our X coordinate determines how far off center these balls are positioned. So we want to change our X coordinate to be the opposite sign of our original. So I will go minus, minus, and then this one is already negative, so we go positive. Now if I save this and I reload this here, you see we now have a copy of our little horn. And it's mirrored, so that's done. And that wasn't too difficult really, was it? Now the nice thing about doing it like this with the keeping everything based off of the, the ball at the bottom, the base ball, the head ball, is that I can now adjust their position really easily. So I can adjust both of them. And then I can go in and say, for example, say for example that I adjust, that I leave this one more or less where it was and I just adjust this one. So this is the, the left one. If I save this and then I reload here, scroll down to the add ball section, this is my left devil horn and I've changed the position of only this and all the others can stay exactly the same. So to make this one be mirrored and be in the exact same position as that one, all I have to do is change this first number to match. So it has to be minus 27. And if I save and load again, you will see that the right horn moves out and matches the left horn. So there we go. I think I'm quite happy with that positioning. The next step, of course, is to add lines. Now, you can add lines in Lines Pro or you can add lines in here. I still think that it's a good idea to go down to your line section here, find your last line and just say last line. So that way you're going to know where your last line is. So when you start adding lines, you can easily see where your horns begin. Again, I'm going to load it. And by the way, the reason I don't put this underneath, because you absolutely can, but the reason I don't is because Pet Workshop deletes any comments, any null comments like this that are at the end of a section. 
if there's no data underneath. So if I were to put this underneath, it just wouldn't show up. So it's completely useless. I have to put it here to make my edits and then I can always move it back to uh, a more logical place later. So I'm gonna go ahead and add lines between here. And I will save this and show you what that looks like. So again, let's go down to our line section now. And you see these three lines are our left horn. What the lines do is they connect one ad ball to the next. So if we go back up and look at the numbers we had here. If you look along here, then what I've done is connected 95 to 94, then 94 to 93, then 93 to 92. And indeed, that's what you'll find here, 95 to 94, 94 to 93, 93 to 92. So if I wanted to mirror this, I can. I just do this. And if I look up here at what these numbers are, we're gonna to want to connect 99 to 98, 98 to 97, 97 to 96. So I just change these numbers, 99 to 98, 98 to 97, 97 to 96, save, and open that here and there you go, it's all connected up. Again, you can just do that in Pet Workshop and just do this and just connect them all in Pet Workshop, whatever you find easiest. I tend to do a mixture of both depending on what the project is. One more really handy tip for when you're working with ad balls is that Pet Workshop really helpfully shows you the ad ball number if you hover over a specific ad ball. So if you hover over a baseball, it tells you the name of that baseball. You see here it says cheek R, which is the right cheek. Uh, earlier I showed you the head. So just look down in this left corner and you will see that if I hover over the ad balls, it will tell you which ad ball it is and also which baseball that ad ball is off of and it doesn't matter if you have an ad ball base of another ad ball so if i just give you this example you saw me make that off of this ad ball but ultimately it's cheek ad ball so it still says cheek left in the bottom that's really helpful in a lot of cases so just an extra little tip if you do lose track if you're not sure what number each ad ball is you can just go into Pet Workshop and hover over and you'll be able to see them. And an additional tip is that if you're struggling to see the different ad balls, just color them differently. And then you can go into Lines Pro and you can see which colors each of them are and then figure out from this, this uh, bottom left corner which ad ball is which. That is basically the process done. But I do want to show you one more thing. We're going to go to Pets4 and go to the Adoption Center and actually adopt one of these Oshis. Doesn't really matter what they are. Scaredy is fine. Adopt. There we go. Cute little kitten here. I'll put her away. I have to shut this because otherwise it won't load in Lines Pro. I'm going to open her file up. Security. All right. Again, pets have the same sections as the breed file in terms of the Apple section and the baseball section. So if you go down to the ad ball section, you're going to see the same ad balls as in the breed file that we looked at earlier. These are the nose balls, 
These are the ear balls down to here. And then we have our horns. But notice that now our horns are all based off ball number 24. So when you adopt an actual pet from a breed file, the game converts any ad balls that you have based off of other ad balls into balls based off of the base ball. Going back to our orange short hair file, I'm going to actually delete the right devil horn and I will also delete the right lines. I'm going to save this. I'm just going to load it up so you can see that I, what I've done. So here you go. And now we're going to go to pets four. and adopt an orange short hair that only has one de devil horn. Okay. So little unicorn here only has one horn. Put her away. And open unicorn. And if you have a look here, we have our four ad balls for the left horn, and they're now all based off the baseball. So I copied them, and I can open uh, our orange short hair file, scroll down to the ad balls, and we can just replace these ad balls with the ones from our pet. And now, if I want to mirror them, all I have to do is copy this and switch the sign for all these. I don't need to change the baseball number. So that's a little trick. Here you go. And connecting the lines is the same as before. I will do it in Pet Workshop this time, but it should be no different. There you go. Save, and if I reopen this, oops. Scroll down organizes these into nature columns when you save in Pet Workshop and reload. So it automatically does that for you. And if I scroll down to the line section, you can see that it has added my right lines as well. So that's it. That's also now mirrored. And that means that you can make really complicated ad balls based structures adopt a pet and just mirror it like that. The limitation is that because these are now all based off of the head bowl, if I move them around, they move on their own. So I can no longer easily reposition these horns. It was a lot easier to do that before I made this change. I think that's it really. I think uh, that about covers mirroring ad balls. It hopefully helps you to understand how they work. Obviously start with simple structures when you do this first the first time, but you will quickly get the hang of it. It's really not that complicated and it doesn't really require any math skills because I think a lot of people find it kind of intimidating thinking that it requires math skills. It doesn't. It just requires you to be able to count and you can just list the ball numbers here if that's something you find helpful. Okay. Thank you for watching. If uh, you enjoyed this video, do like, please do comment if you uh, can think of anything else that you would like a video on. I'm going to make some adjustments to these and then I should have them up for download in the next few days. Thank you very much and see you next time.